how you all doing? What we're going up to in this video? I'm going to be changing the rear brake pads on my Honda Civic 1800 petrol 5 door hatchback 2008. So let's get on with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is chalk the front wheels. And what I'm doing now is putting it into first gear and releasing the handbrake. OK, so what I'm doing now is just slackening off the wheel nuts while the car is still on the ground. You don't need to take the nuts all the way off or the car might collapse. Just slacken them slightly. It's easier to do it on the ground than it is when it's jacked up because it's uh, not very safe on the single jack. And you don't want the car to fall off the jack and uh, possibly cause you some serious damage. If the nuts are too tight to undo by hand, just use your foot and your body weight to crack the bolts open. So now all the nuts are loose, we can uh, raise the car up on the jack. On my older Civic, the uh, jacking point is located just here. Make sure you put the jack on the correct jacking point or you may damage your car underneath. Now the car is in the air, you can put an axle stand underneath the chassis. Make sure you use an axle stand or the car could just fall off the jack and you'll probably die. So now we can completely remove all the wheel nuts. And then finally remove the wheel. Right then, so now the wheel's off, we can see the two fixing bolts that hold the brake caliper in position. I'm going to undo the top bolt first, which is a 14mm socket. And now we can remove the bottom bolt, which is also a 14mm socket. These are floating calipers, so they are like floating on the pins which the bolts actually screw into. And sometimes when you're undoing the bolts, the pins will spin as well. So what you have to do is get a 40mm spanner and put it on the nut shape on the end of the pin. Now the bolts are removed, we can prise the caliper off the caliper cage. Usually, like in my case, the brake pads are all rusted up and uh, messed up. So you might need a screwdriver and a hammer to bash them out of the way. I only bought this car a few days ago and the uh, last owner certainly got his money's worth out of these rear brake pads. But luckily he has had new brake discs and pads on the front. OK, so that's all the easy bits out of the way. Now it starts to get a bit more difficult. Uh, the thinner your brake pads get means the further this piston will come outwards. And to get the new brake pads back in, you have to push this piston back inside. Normally it is quite an easy job. You could just use a big G-clamp to screw it back in. But unfortunately, this type of piston has to screw in with a special tool. But why buy a special tool when there's a way around it? You'll probably only ever use it once or twice in your lifetime. All you need to do is get some uh, crocodile pliers, or in my case I'm just using some mole grips. Just carefully put it on the edge of the piston and hopefully if your piston's not too seized up it will start to turn. But be very careful of the dust rubber because the inner piston could get wet and cause a sticky brake. So we'll have to try and turn this in a clockwise direction 
and hopefully it will start screwing back in. To make sure the piston seats all the way back in, just use a screwdriver type tool to persuade it the rest of the way. Okay, so now we're ready to put the brake pads back in, but before we do that, just go around it with a wire brush. Also, make sure that you check the uh, floating pins, just pull one out, make sure it's not rusty, and make sure it's got grease on it. Before we put the pads back in, make sure that the squeal indicator, the brake wear indicator, is at the bottom. All it does is make a squealing noise when your brake pads are worn out to let you know your brake pads are worn out. Also the little dot pin on the back of the pads, make sure that it goes into one of the slots on the piston. Then we can put the uh, caliper back over the pads. Then we can put the first bolt back in. Then we can put the second bolt back in. Then we can go round to the driver's side and press the brake to make sure the pistons are pumped back out. And that's it, job done. Put the wheel back on and then we can go for a drive down the motorway. I did forget to mention the uh, brake reservoir. Make sure you take the cap off the master cylinder because as the brakes have worn fitter, obviously somebody will have topped the brake fluid up. So mine, I did have to drain some brake fluid off because the reservoir was too full when I'd actually put the pads in so there you go so I hope the video was okay hopefully it will help a few people out who's doing their brakes also for all those people who have been there watching the landfill bike project uh, I did put a video out about three days ago of me doing the carburetors so if you've missed that please go and watch it and also there will be another video out on the landfill bike shortly make sure you watch that one too because things are moving forward dramatically so yeah look after yourselves and I'll see you on the next one <laughs>